Hello and welcome to Firewall Management 201. I'm Professor Wall. Today we're going to be talking about the challenges of accurate simulation of network routing. So to familiarize ourselves with the issue, suppose you have a network that's organized more or less like this. So you have several route firewalls and then you have like a, a DMZ network with some other firewalls behind it and then the core backbone and behind that some more uh, uh, firewalled off silos. And you want to be able to simulate the path that a packet would take uh, when it's starting from one of these sides until it gets to its destination. Which path would it take? How would you go about simulating this path? So basically you need to look at each of these routing elements and simulate the routing decision on that element, discover what is the next top gateway, go to it, simulate the routing decision on that, and so on and so forth until you get to the final destination. And a piece of, to be able to do that, you need to extract the routing tables from all the relevant routing elements so that you can simulate their de decisions. So how would you do that? How would you extract the routing information from all of these devices in your network? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is to use the simple network management protocol, SNMP. Probably all the routing elements are in your environment respond to SNMP. So if, as long as you know the password that the devices uh, require, their community string, you can use SNMP to query the devices and extract the routing tables through SNMP, or so you would think. There are some challenges, though, where this approach is limited. It's good, but it's limited. One of the challenges is that in current networking, there is a big trend on virtualization. So if you consider one of these routers, for instance, you might discover that even though it's one big router physically, inside it's actually organized as several different routing elements, virtual routing elements, or VRFs for short. And each of these separate VRFs has its own routing table, and it runs its, makes its own routing decisions. So if you connect to the physical router using SNMP and extract the routing table, what will you get? Well, what usually happens is that you're going to get a mixture of the routing tables of all these VRFs. You wouldn't get each of them separately. And if you get a mixture of all the routes, you really are not accurately representing the routing decision because, in fact, for any given packet, only one of the VRFs will make a routing decision. And you need to identify which one it is and get that routing table separate from the rest. Basically what this means is if you have a multi-VRF router, using SNMP is probably not going to give you the results that you want. You'll get wrong routing in, uh, information out of the device. So you have to resort to a different mechanism of extracting the routes. For instance, using SSH to the command line of the device. And if you connect that way, you can extract each routing table separately, issuing the appropriate commands and specifying the name of the VRF that you're interested in. But if you're using SSH, you have a different challenge that you have to worry about. And that is, not all routes are equal. There are two broad classes of routes that a router manages. There are the static routes, and then there are the dynamic routes. Remember, these routers are probably constantly exchanging routing information between them using some routing protocols, such as BGP, OSPF, RIP, or some other routing protocol. And all of these dynamic routes are critical f to the accuracy of the routing decision. So you need to be able to extract both the static routes and the dynamic routes. And the distinction is that typically there are different commands that extract these types of routes. So you have to remember to issue both types of commands to extract both the static and the dynamic routes. Otherwise, you only have a partial picture of the routing that that router is implementing. A third challenge that I'd like to bring up is the case of router redundancy. So what is that all about? Well, if you look at one of your big core routers in your backbone, 
you might discover that for high availability reasons, that router is not just a single device, it's actually a pair of devices. It really looks like this, where you have two physical devices next to each other and backing each other up. So they're synchronized, they're, they, they are running some sort of high availability router redundancy protocol, usually either HSRP or VRRP, that synchronizes the routing state and um, the state tables between those two devices so that if one of them goes down, the other one takes over and all the routes continue seamlessly. Well, how does that work? One aspect of these protocols is that the interfaces on these two shadowing routers are paired. So for every interface coming out of the primary router, there's also a second interface out of the secondary router. And they're both connected to the same subnets. And they have very similar IP addresses, but different. So one is like a dot one, and the other is a dot two. And each, each of these pairs of interf interfaces uh, back, back each other up. So how does that work in terms of the upstream router that routes to route to R2? How does, that, how does the upstream router, let's say R3, refer to a route to R2? It cannot refer to the dot one or to the dot two IP address, because if R2 fails over, all of a sudden the IP address will be different. So the way this is resolved is that there's a third IP address that's usually called the virtual IP, or VIP. And that third IP floats between the two interfaces and is associated with one interface or the other, depending on which physical router is currently the primary and which is the secondary. So in order to understand the routing on the upstream devices, you have to realize that your router is actually a pair of routers, and you have to identify all these IP addresses the physical IP addresses and also the virtual IP addresses floating between them. Otherwise, you're going to misunderstand the routes on the upstream routers as they refer to this high availability pair. So these are just some of the challenges that you have to face when you're trying to simulate the routing decision on a complex network. Thank you for your attention, and hope to see you next in one of the future classes.